It's Jack the only brave one among you lot. Come on, Ben, what about you? I'm sure we could rustle up a fine steed. Not me, I'm very fond of terra firma, thanks, Chris. Yeah, TOB as close as you get me to a horse. Horses, they are dangerous at both ends and uncomfortable in the middle. Anyway, you've got the man from Snowy River here. Tom, I'd like you to meet Sonia Bruckner, my brilliant new campaign manager, and the brains behind his fundraiser. You're the brains, Chris. Now Thomas is lucky to have you. Hey, how does the heritage angle figure? Well, the two trails that we're using were part of the original stagecoach route from Mount Thomas to St David's. Yeah, and Chris, count me in. Fantastic. Jack went for a ride on my brother's old horse and he's packed with those. He's ready to go. I heard Alec was back in town. He hasn't fronted at the pub yet. Now, if Alec is as good looking as you say he is, I'm quite looking forward to meeting Maggie, him. I think we're... he is gorgeous. Yeah? Yeah, but he's taken. Did you know he played for Australia in the 94 Commonwealth Games? 94, isn't it? It's actually quite a big age gap between you two. Oh, yeah, 12 years, but my mum reckons we had the two kids that are most alike because we share the McKinley determination gene. <laughs> Excuse me, can everyone please get out of the way? Thank you. What's going on here? It's my car. Look at it. I just look at it. Huh? It's wrecked. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You are... Oh, Maggie, yeah, this is my brother, Alex. Oh, Alec, I'm um, Maggie Doyle. Um, listen, we'll find out what's going on here. Can everybody just move back, back please? Back. What's Can you just stand back, please, all of you? All right, yeah, Can you just stand That's back, good please? boys and girls. Now, I'm sure someone saw what happened here. No? You're a real bastard, aren't you? Oh, don't think I'm going to give up this evening! It's a nice way to meet your brother. Oh, you two. Look, it was nothing to do with anyone else. It's private business between him and me. Kathy, you assaulted him. If Mr McKinley decides to make a complaint, then it does become a police matter. At the very least, it's going to be reported to your school principal. He won't want you guys involved. Oh, well, why is that? Doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, it does matter. Take a seat. Kathy, what do you know about the vandalism to Mr McKinley's car? I know I didn't do it. Why would I? I had something to say and I said it to his face. I don't need to bash Alex's car. Well, you're quite familiar with him and what you always call him by his first name? Everybody does. Mr McKinley makes him feel old, he says. How old are you, Cathy? Be 18 in October. 18. Do... Well, you want to spit it out, Jack? Yeah. Um... Okay. So, so you'd have a fair bit of contact with him at school, yeah? Hockey practices and matches on Saturday. And what's the feeling amongst the team about Alec as a coach? He makes his train pretty hard, but he gets results. Well, do you and think that... So, sorry, Jack, do you think that that could be behind the vandalism, the fact that somebody's resentful that they're being worked too hard? It could be. I know it gets me worked up sometimes. Is that why you slapped him? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I did it. Because of the work. He's a total slave driver. The guy's supposed to be some kind of sports legend, right? So if he's such a winner, how come he ends up coaching a bunch of girls in a dead-end place like this? You didn't answer the question, Chef. Why do you think that someone would vandalise Mr McKinley's car? Maybe they just don't like him, I guess. Do you spend much time with him? <laughs> no. Kathy's on his hockey team. See him around school, don't really see him much. What about Kathy, Chef? How does she feel about him? She gets frustrated sometimes. It makes a lot of demands on her time. So you're sure there's nobody with a grudge against you? Uh, nobody I can think of. No one with any reason to damage your property? My hockey team all need to boot up the bum every now and then, but they know that's part of my job. Have you uh, applied the boot to anyone's bum lately, Cathy Sullivan's in particular? Not as I recall, although I've obviously said something to offend her. Pretty strong reaction for something you might have said. Look, I can be pretty full-on. I'm very passionate about what I do. Is that so? A couple of the girls are up for state selection. I make no apologies for being tough on them. Still no excuse for what Cathy Sullivan's done. Well, if you want to take this matter further, you're going to have to refer it to your headmaster. Uh, no, really. I don't want to make trouble for over a thing like this. I think that's funny, because Cathy thought that you'd prefer to let it drop. Would you like to tell us why? She and Tara Bruckner are my leading goal scorers. I need them to win. If you have any further problems, don't hesitate, please. Right? Thank you, but it's nothing the school can't handle itself. I'm Everything sure. sorted out? Yeah, no problem. So I can't wait to see the girls. When are they going to come up? Uh, as soon as we sell the house in Melbourne. Joanne's stuck down there at the moment dealing with prospective buyers, real estate agents, you know. Oh, it must be hard not seeing them. Yeah, harder than I imagine. McKinley, why don't you run your brother back to the school? Uh, Stuart, you go too. See if you can find out anything more about this vandalism. Somebody must have seen something. Will do, boss. Mr McKinley's decided not to take this matter any further. Maybe next time you won't be so lucky. You right, babe? Yeah, let's get 
boss. Could I have a workplace? Leaving his wife and children in Melbourne does not mean that he's sleeping with his students. Boss, I'm not saying that it does, but there has to be a reason why these things are happening to Alec. And firstly, his car is vandalised, then he's slapped across the face by one of his female students. Not exactly a normal day Kathy of school. Kathy Sullivan has given a reason. He is a taskmaster. Well, boss, we don't go around slapping you. Look, she only came up with that as a reason when I suggested it to her. And there is a chance that whoever committed this vandalism doesn't even attend the school. Well, I don't think so. You see, there, there's something about Kathy's manner that makes me think there's more to Alec than meets the eye. This could all be in the girl's mind, you know. Well, let's just hope so. But for the girl's sake, I wouldn't mind checking it out. I'd just find something to explain yeah, right, what's going all on. All right. Just be discreet. Remember, you're dealing with the brother of one of your colleagues. Yeah, I realise that. Hey. I bet you 50 bucks that I'll come in in front of you. Uh, go on, Jack. No, my Don't mind. Tell me, please, no, I'm not a big man. No. Yes, she is. Right, I'll just get her. Yeah, I'll have a piece of that. It's for uh, you. It's the Knox Community Policing yeah, Squad. Yeah, yeah. OK, all right, Dad. I've got 20 bucks on you to win. Okay. Acting Knox, Sergeant Doyle. Yeah. yeah, thanks very much for returning my call. Uh-huh. OK, that's great. Um, I'll give you a call if I need any more information. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. What's going on? Going on, just uh, some inquiries. My brother comes from Knox Maggie's. Is this about him? Yeah, Doyle had one or two unanswered questions. I told her to check him out. Now that she has, I'm sure we can all get back to work. No, actually, boss, it's not that simple. The CPS investigated Alec uh, over sexually interfering with one of the students at his previous school. I'm sorry. I know when I was in high school, I had a stupid crush on my art teacher. I could never concentrate on any of his classes. And you should see him now. <laughs> What about you? Who would you like to hide? I'm the Molly. Yeah? How did you two actually meet? She dropped a jam sandwich in the dirt and I offered her half of mine. How old were you? I was seven. She was in pubs. Maggie. Alec, just wondering if we could have a quick chat. Uh, this is Constable Lawson. Tara and I were just doing some counselling. Come on in. Tara, I think we can finish this another time, OK? Hey, Tara, it's a nasty bruise. How'd you get that? Uh, hockey's a pretty dangerous game, especially when you're competitive. Anyway, I'd better get... Actually, it might be a good idea if uh, we have a chat with both of you down at the station, if that's OK. Through here, please. Alec, what's going on? I wish someone would I'll talk would to tell you me. in just a minute. Um, Jack, can you please take Tara through to PJ's office yep, to make sure. sure she's comfortable? Um, Tara, would you like your mum present when we interview you? Yes, please. OK. Uh, I can give her a call Thanks, well. Ben. Tara, Maggie, did you, you have any idea where your mum might be? Um, probably Dash, not. you saw what happened at the school this morning. Now, if we're going to find out some answers, we're going to have to ask him some questions. I'm sorry. Please, one glass of water. Not so good for dunking Tim Tams in, but I thought you might like one anyway. My favourite, thanks. I was pretty impressed with your riding this morning. Thanks. Not so bad yourself. Just need to push your horse a bit harder. <laughs> Are you riding in the Heritage Race on Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. I'm going to have a go. See any course? Oh, I don't know about that. I'll wait and see how Matilda feels on the day. It's my horse. Yeah, well, junior course will be a waste of time. No chance of winning, it's too long. Oh, whatever. I'm just going to enjoy the day, you know? I don't care if I win. Yeah, well, I'm going to win. Do you always take such a physical approach with your counselling? Oh, for God's sake. Look, what you saw was me giving the girl a hug. You're taking it out of context. She was quite upset. Seems like an ongoing saga, young girls getting upset around you, Alec. Look, if that's a crack about Cathy, I've already told you I don't know what her problem is. She seems to be using me as an outlet for some other frustration. It happens with sport. Can you uh, tell us about your dismissal from St Mary's College? Look, for starters, I wasn't dismissed. I resigned. One of my students had a crush on me. I put a stop to it, she got vindictive, I left. End of story. I came here with a clean slate. Tara, has Mr McKinley ever approached you in a, uh, in a physical way? Oh, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever Mrs. heard. Brookner, I'm sorry, but it is. I was on the selection committee that brought Alec McKinley to Mount Thomas. Mrs. Brookner, I know his background. He is completely trustworthy. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Mum, please. 
All right. But I won't allow you to cut him down. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, you are asking whether Ali has ever made any sexual advances. Yeah. No, there's nothing like that between us. He's a great coach and we get on well, but that's all there is to it. We noticed you were a bit upset before in his office. Was there a reason for that? Could, could it have had something to do with the damage to his car? I already told the other police. I don't know anything about that. I don't have a reason for being upset. Santara, if there was something going on between you, even if you were a willing party, Mr McKinley is in a position of authority over you and that is illegal. No, th there's nothing going on. Tara has an excellent chance at selection for the Victorian hockey team. Alex's coaching is vital to those plans. Mrs Brookner, nobody is interested in throwing accusations around, but this is your daughter we're talking about. If there was a problem, she would have told me about it. She's got nothing but praise for Alec. I mean, he's a lifeline in this piddly little town. Boss, um, Tara has signed a statement so that she's free to go. You see? Come on, Tara. And I'd appreciate it if you did whatever it takes to nip any gossip in the bud. It's nothing but obstructive and harmful. So can I tell Alec he's in the clear since he is the victim? Yeah, he's all right. Why not? Good luck for the race. You too. I'm sorry for any inconvenience. We shouldn't have to bother you again. Just doing your job. Oh, it's been a hell of a day. Mm. Want to do dinner? Yeah. Mrs. Brooke now. Do you have any idea where Alec is? Oh, I don't know where anyone is. I was supposed to pick up Tara about 20 minutes ago and she's gone off with that Kathy Sullivan. Apparently there was some kind of upset. Upset? Alec shouted at her or something. Well, when was this? About 20 minutes ago. The girls don't know whether to wait for Alec or go and get changed. I was just going to go off to the changing rooms. Oh, all right. I'll come with you. You're in hospital. Oh, my head. Oh, no. Someone gave you a fair whack on the noggin. Oh. The doctor says you're going to be fine. Oh. Hey, um, I've been trying to get hold of Joanne, but she doesn't seem to be... No. No, don't do that. I... Look, she'll just get worried and drop everything and come rushing up. I'll call her when I get out of here, OK? That's a patient. Oh, I've got the mother of all headaches. Can't this wait? We'll be as quick as we can, Dash. Alec, you know what happened? Uh, I hit a ball into the bush and I, I went in to get it and then bangs and something hit me. Did you see the attacker at all? Oh, mate. All I saw was stars. Alec, we've just spoken with the doctor. Your injuries are at the back and the side of your hair. We're working on a theory that you could have been hit with a hockey stick. <laughs> hockey stick on the sports level. It's a new one for Cluedo. Yeah, I own a hockey stick, so what? Well, where is it? At school, that's where I use it. Can we see it? Please yourselves. Kathy, were you aware that uh, Alec McKinley was attacked during hockey practice this afternoon? Look, I wasn't even there. I was looking for Tara. You are looking for a why? Well, the bastard tore strips off her, told her she was pathetic and a waste of space. Tara couldn't take it. Wanted to help her pick up the pieces. And you found her where? She was at the shelter shed bawling her eyes out. Are you angry? Angry enough to belt McKinley and me? Sure. But I didn't. I had my hands full with Tara, like I said. If I had something to say, I'd say it to his face. He was horrible. I mean, cruel and horrible. All because I didn't go in for the tackle hard enough. Well, Alec has shouted at you before, though, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, but not like this. I mean, this was... this was mean and, and personal. So you ran away? Yeah, I, I just... I wanted time to think, so I went to the shelter shed. And no one goes there after school. But Kathy found you there, didn't she? Yeah, I sent her away. She wasn't really helping. Did you have your hockey stick with you? Yeah, I was at hockey practice. Oh, where is it now? In the sports cage at school with the rest of them. Why? Well, Alec McKinley was assaulted this afternoon and we think the weapon used was a hockey stick. This is crap, man. Minute, right? Kathy hasn't done anything. Right? If you would just take a seat, Look, I'm sure it might be... tell me what's going on? You are treating my daughter like she is a criminal. Nobody is treating anybody like... Tara, are you all right? Yeah, Mum. You can take your daughter as soon as we've examined her hockey stick. Oh, 
I mean, you don't mean to say that you think she attacked Alec? He's simply eliminating all possibilities, Mrs. Brookner. Somebody obviously has a very real grudge against yeah, Mr. Yeah, well, that's absurd. You know the person you should be checking? You should be checking that little tart, Cathy Sullivan. Oh, Mum! Hey, who are you calling You're a tart? Right, well, it's true. Enough. She is the troublemaker in that team. Mom, it's not true. Just because Mom. she's going to be your daughter in the state squad. Oh. Anyway, if anyone's a tart, it's your sweet little tar over there. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I said that's enough. Yeah, it's true. Why don't you ask her about the letters? Go on. Have you promised you wouldn't say anything? Oh, this bitch brought her on herself. What letters? Soppy little love letters she's been writing to the teacher. Adolescent fantasies. Anyone can see that. Mrs. Brookner, these are all addressed to Alec McKinley. What, what, what were they doing in your dresser drawer? I found them in Tara's room. I was trying to decide what to do about them. I'm sure you hadn't already decided. Meaning? Well, you'd be pretty angry if you thought these feelings were reciprocated, wouldn't you? What are you trying to say? That I hit Alec McKinley? No, you, you were at the school at the right time and you could have vandalised his car this morning. Oh, oh, this is really starting to get ridiculous. Well, the first thing I knew about it was when I saw him coming out of the bushes. In the meantime, I'd like to take my daughter home, if you don't mind. Yes, thanks for your time, Mrs. Brooke. Um, thank you. So, nothing from the school, I take it? Well, they checked all the hockey sticks and there is no obvious sign that any of them were used to assault Alex. So whoever did it? took the weapon away with him. It's a pity he didn't get a better look, really. Oh, that's fantastic. I know. Yeah. How's Alec? Oh, well, he's staying in overnight for observation, but uh, they think he's going to be fine. Well, thank God for that. Here's some water. Ta. So, what's the big deal? How's your brother? He's good. I stopped off and had a look at the rustler on my way back from the hospital. Yeah. How did you manage to get the afternoon off tomorrow? Um, time out to bond with Matilda. Oh, I could have used the extra time with my horse. Don't look, don't look at me. I, I mean, I was busy. Ben did them. Oh, who just happens to have 20 bucks riding on Jack finishing first? It all becomes I, clear. I had completely forgotten. Now I'm sorry with for you. the inconvenience. Yeah, right? sure. Tara, you have to be at least 18 to be here. Why don't you go into the dining room? room? What about How the could you? I don't want to talk Tara, about this What are you doing now? with those letters? They were private. Yeah, what what about, about this when I get home? You showed them to the police and out there. Tara, no! What did you expect me to do? You don't want me to have anything in my life that you don't control, do you? It's just like with Dad. That's why I left, isn't it? Isn't it's it? your father left because he was a loser! Oh. But you know what? Alec and I are in love. But you wouldn't understand that. Couldn't. But I hate you! Chris, can I use your phone? Why didn't you tell me you and Joanne had split up? You rang her, didn't you? I asked you not to. Now you told me that she was going to move back here once she'd sold the house in Melbourne. You lied to me, Alec. Because it was none of your concern. Oh, sorry. I've got to get back to school. The girls have a training match this afternoon. Give it a miss for one day. I'm sure they'll ready. manage without you. They'll slack off without me. Whatever. Look, Dash. Look, I was ashamed about the marriage breakup. It's not easy to admit I failed. Alec, I'm your sister. Like another word, thanks, Alec. Actually, I was just it's leaving. It's pretty urgent, if you don't mind. But... You know anything about these letters? Yes, they're from Tara Brookner. Right, well, strong stuff, some of it. Really, I wouldn't know. I stopped reading them as soon as I realised where they were going. I thought I could handle it myself. I returned the letters to Tara and told her they were inappropriate. Leaves you in a fairly vulnerable position. I admit not going to the principal was stupid. But Tara Bruckner is the best player I have. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardise the success of the team or her place in it. Now, if you'll excuse me. He is competitive. That's we're talking about a schoolgirls hockey well, team. You don't know Alec. He's the kind of guy who gets serious over a game of tickly wings. Why wouldn't he show anybody the letters? Maggie, I'm telling you, Alec right. is not the kind of guy who'd have an affair with one of his students. OK, Dash, look, we know he's a happily married man and we'll do our best to protect that, but we've got to look at these letters as a possible reason for the assault. Um, boss, this is Sonia Bruckner. Oh, well, what does she want? Well, she got a call from the school this morning and Tara didn't turn up. And when she went to check the stables, Tara wasn't there and neither was a horse.
Jeez, you alright? Yeah. Hey, do you mind? No. Come on. He's, he's lame. Oh, no, it's a sand crack. No big deal. I have a magical little trick that will dazzle and amaze you. You got a soldering iron back at the stables? Yeah, you're an expert or something. Oh, no, I don't know about that. It's an old bush remedy. I'm more than happy to take a look for you. Cool. So, uh, why aren't you at school today? Your mum was pretty worried about you. Didn't feel like it. Just wanted to spend some time with my horse. All right, well, better let them know you're OK. 208 Portable to Mount Thomas Station. Now, remember, the trick is to let the iron cool down. And then it glues together like a dream. Oh, good girl, Percy. She's lucky to have someone who loves her so much. <laughs> yeah, well, she cares about me too. What happened there? What? Well, there are those bruises. How'd you get them? Oh, nothing. Don't worry about it. Oh, come on, it's something. No, it's not. I, ju I just fell off Percy, all right? Just don't tell anyone. You promised you wouldn't say anything. No, I didn't promise. I could not say. I, I thought... I don't care what you thought. It was none of your business. I was concerned about your safety. And I only mentioned we it. We shouldn't have mentioned it at all. You lied to me, Jack, and you betrayed my trust. So just leave me alone. Tara, I didn't lie. Lawson, leave it. She'll get over it. So how would the interview go? Well, she's still sticking to a story about falling from the horse. I saw the bruising. There's no way. She's been hit with something. Hello. Hi, what do you think? Very nice. Very green. Hmm. Uh, Mrs. Bruckner, would we be able to talk to you about Tara, please? Yeah, sure. I see Sam about a few things. Good on you, Chris. Uh, apparently, she has some quite severe bruising to her body. Tara works hard. She gets bruised all the time. Hockey, horse riding, all sorts well, of things. Well, the thing is that the bruising is in a rather odd spot for a horse riding injury. I'm sorry, I can't tell you anymore. Except that if my daughter was in any trouble, believe me, I would be the first to know. He yells a lot on the field. Is that what you mean by method? Well, has he ever struck a player? It's never hit me. Never hit anyone else? Tara Brookner's on the team. Has he ever hit her? She's not going to know I said this, is she? No, I won't say anything. We are in the change rooms the other day, right? And mm. I noticed some really evil bruises on her back and stomach. I was lucky to see him in the first place. She usually changes in the shower cubicle. Yeah, why's that? Just hang up on people seeing her body. Anyway, when I asked her about the bruises, she clammed up and went all weird. Did she say what caused the bruises at all? No, but I forced her to tell me. She said it was Alec McKinley, but made me swear I wouldn't tell anyone. Is that why he slapped him? He beats her up and she's still enough with the lousy bastard. What else was I going to do? Can I go now? Yeah, thanks, Kathy. There's nothing to suggest it's Sonia. There is no sign of a boyfriend, which really, unfortunately, only leaves us with Alec. Yes, but just remember that he has also been assaulted, his car's been vandalised, and we still haven't found the culprit. I know all of that, boss, but what if it's connected in some way, that it's retribution for something that Alec has well, done? Well, it'd help if you found some proof. Yes, Lawson? Uh, Tara Brookner's here. She says she's got something to tell us. Alec and I have been sleeping together. It was his idea, and when I tried to put a stop to it, he beat me up. Uh, how long has this been going on for Tara? A few weeks since he got here. Right, and uh, on how many occasions would you say that this has actually happened? Um, I don't know, maybe four, five. Uh -huh. Where? Uh, the first time in the common room at school, uh, the other times at his place. The common room, ad adventurous? Um, it was after practice, uh, there was no one else around. Do you remember what night? Um, Monday or, or Wednesday, I, I don't really remember. No, that, that's okay. The, uh, the assault, Tara, can you tell us what he used to hit you? I don't know what you mean. Well, was it an open hand, um, a fist, or some kind of a weapon? Um, neither. He threw me up against a locker. A locker? In the changing rooms at school. Absolute rubbish. I have not even been in the female change rooms. Tara Brookner alleges you've had sex on four occasions in the school common room and at your home. No, no, she's never set foot inside my house. 
Well, she knew where to send the letters. She could have got my address from anywhere. I am in the school directory. Alec, how old are you? 32. Why? Well, spending a lot of time with 17-year-old girls who all think you're fantastic. Now, I, I can't understand how you could be tempted. Most men would. I am only interested in coaching the team to win, nothing else. Tara Bruckner. She's an attractive girl, don't you think? Tara came to see me today. She was very upset about the business with the letters and she was looking for comfort, I suppose. I told her, as gently as possible, we couldn't have a personal relationship. I was her coach and that was the beginning and the end of it. So first he's sleeping with his students, then he's beating them up. You'll have him spying for the Chinese next. Can you take it easy? She's just in there. Look, I don't believe her either. You don't? I, I'll admit I wasn't so sure at first, but she came in here and now I don't believe her. Did you think that her answers were a bit rehearsed? Yeah, they were, and she was nervous. So she is trying to get back at Alec, you reckon? The question is, how are we going to prove it? Well, I could give her a lift back to school. She seems to trust me. Maybe she could tell me the truth then. I'll just make sure she doesn't accuse you of anything. Well, everything I'm telling you is true. Well, uh, you were sweet on Alec, weren't you? Yeah, I thought he was different. I thought that when he looked at me, he saw the real me and not just some hockey player. Boy, I was wrong. Allegations like this can ruin a teacher's career. I'm not lying. OK, I'm just saying that in case you've still got any feelings left for him. Constable! Back to the city, 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 back Mr. McKinley, it's Constable Lawson. Right, come out now. Yeah, come on out. Come on. Get out of here. You're a crap coach anyway. Yeah, get out of here. You're a crap coach anyway. I've been suspended. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Hi. I hear what happened at school today. I'm really sorry. Uh, country towns, eh? I knew I missed them for a reason. Well, for what it's worth, I don't believe anything that Tara said. Thanks. Thanks. Doesn't matter anyway, does it? Looks like my teaching career at Mount Thomas is over. I just have to look forward to winning that heritage race tomorrow. Make that my last big hurrah. Well, do you think that's a good idea? Probably still not 100% from the way I'm ahead. If I don't enter that race, I may as well take an ad in the Gazette saying I'm guilty. If I'm going to go, it's going to be as a winner. My daughter has something that she has to tell you. I lied about sleeping with Alec. What about the bruises on your body? Did Alec give you those? I made that up too. So he was accused for something he never did. Why'd you do it to him? Because I was in love with him. And he wouldn't listen to me. Gave me back my letters. Didn't return my calls. He said I... I was... inappropriate. So if um, Alec didn't give you the bruises, who did? I, I told Jack the truth when he first saw them. I fell off my horse. Now listen, Dash, I had a thought. I don't think it's a good idea if you run the senior course. I don't think the horse is up to it. What's this? You're trying to psych me out, are you? Well, you make sure you get a good start, right. and then the race is yours. Okay, just let me do it my own way, all right? Keep your back straight, and don't forget to use the whip. Yes, Mum. All right, here it is. I've got 20 on you, Lawson. Fine looking speed, Jack's got I under just him. hope you've been to the bank, Ben. Come on, Jack. Go Come on, Dash. Dash.
boss is your pick to win the race. Oh, I wouldn't have the foggies. I don't think young McKinley's got much show, though. Come on. Ah, to be 17 and in love again, huh? Shame you lost interest when you turned 30. Huh? I said it's a shame you lost... Mm. You don't have to, you know. Just because your mother wants you to. Come, Bess. Is she OK? What is it you? Oh, what does it look like? Are you OK? Oh, I've hurt my ankle. And Rebel saw a snake, he got spooked and he's run off. Sorry, Dash, I've got a race to win. I can't. Thanks, Can you help me find my horse? Oh, of course. You're not hurt, are you? Going? Only my pride. Don't stop, just keep going. Yeah, look, I'll help. Oh, are you sure you can still win? If you go now, you might have a chance. Just keep riding, don't stop. Okay, um, I'm gonna try and find Rebel. Poor thing might be hurt. You just look after Dash and first, okay? Yeah. Did I really just say that? Sure did. <laughs> Comes Alec. Alec! Go, you can win this! He goes to win the There you go, who's this? Chef, take it easy, mate. Just take it easy. Pansy! Just leave her alone! Leave me alone. It's not on. Yeah, it's all right. You've been having too much red cordial. What's wrong with you? It's just a little cut. Probably best not to ride him, though. Oh, here. Hey, here. Jump up on Matilda. Well, what are you going to do? I'll jump on behind you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I'm going to make a deal with you, all right? Yeah, what? I'm going to steer, and you keep your hands to yourself. Here they, Here they come. Mate, I did. Oh, what a shame. PJ had to leave. I wish you could have seen this. <laughs> I don't believe this. Yay! Yay! You just lost that race for nothing. Chef, you want to tell us what this was doing at your house? I was mining it for Kathy. She left it there after hockey practice this oh, week. Right, well, there's traces of blood on it, and forensic will be able to match it to Alec McKinley's, so... You want to tell us the truth now? Kathy really wanted to be captain of the hockey team. She's been working hard, going to training almost every day. She could never get the position. Bloody McKinley. Kathy told me he put the hard word on her. She couldn't be captain unless she slept with him. And so you thought you'd warn him off, yeah? Figured maybe I could leave him a message. He could work it out. So I trashed his car. And when he didn't get the message, you decided to take it a bit further. 
Went down to the field. Thought maybe I could reason with him. Reason with him? But you, you usually reason with someone with a hockey stick, do you? I just wanted to hit him. Then he hit the balls into the bushes, so I followed and I whacked him. Is that what you and, and Kathy were talking about at the race? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give her this. She laughed at me. She said I was a loser. And a joke. Said it was her who wanted Alec. Didn't want me. Shiv, you know because of Kathy, you're now in very serious trouble. I'm gonna hand it to you for half this mob votes for you. You're a mobby for the council. Thank you, but hand it to Sonia. You're right. Better idea. Got to do something to well, thank my supporters. <laughs> this rate, you're not gonna make it around the room, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll take one for later. Twenty Not to me, not to Dad. Well, maybe you're more like your dad than your mum. You certainly showed that today. Yeah, well, it's felt like it was time to break away from her, you know, just make a decision for myself for once. But I'm just so sick of all these lies. What about the bruises, Tara? That wasn't from falling off a horse. Nope. Lied about that too. Lied to Kathy about the bruises. I lied so Alec would still select me for the state team. I lied to Mum. I lied to you. And everything's just out of control. <laughs> so how'd you get the bruises? Mum and Dad split up and everything just and Mum was just always... And you just get to a point, Jack, where you just hate yourself so much that uh. you make yourself sick. And, you, and you've got to do something, so... So you hit yourself. And then you hit yourself again and again and harder and harder until so you don't even feel it anymore. I've just never been good enough. I'm so sorry, Tara. I'm the one that's not good enough. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, folks, could I have everybody's attention, please? We're about to present the trophy to the winner of today's race, but before we do, there's uh, some thanks that What's are this? in order. Peace and offering. First and foremost, Senior Sergeant Croydon and all That's very nice, you know. Thomas, what you didn't do for me this afternoon. Oh, come on, Dash. I would have come back for you as soon as I won the race. You of all people should understand. Next, Maybe you should I think about like what you have to give up to win. Very much whether or not it's worth my it. My wonderful campaign manager, Sonia oh, Bruckner. Well, without her hard work and her dedication... She almost lost her daughter because winning is all she cares about. Not so well, you've been making this time. That a few trophies on your shelf are going to be worth it when your family's falling apart on you. And so, without congratulations, further ado, well I'd like to know it's what you wanted. To today's winner, Alec. Alec McKinley, come on up. Congratulations. 
Well done. Thanks, Chris, for a great competition. Uh, I would just like to acknowledge some advice that I've uh, been given, which was uh, long overdue, that winning isn't everything. And when I look at this chamber pot, that won't be too hard to remember. <laughs> uh, even though there can only be one winner, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the race there. today. Uh, great, great oh, effort, guys. And Chris, yeah. once again, thank All right, you. All right, if you chamber pot. Elections. Thank you very much. <laughs> brave one among you lot. Come on, Ben. What about you? I'm sure we could rustle up a fine steed. Not me. I'm very fond of terra firma, thanks, Chris. Yeah, T.O.B. as close as you get me to a horse. Horses, they are dangerous at both ends and uncomfortable in the middle. Anyway, you've got the man from Snowy River here. Tom, oh, I'd like you to meet Sonia Bruckner, my brilliant new campaign manager and the brains behind this fundraiser. You're the brains, Chris. Matt Thomas is lucky to have you. Hey, how does the heritage angle figure? Well, the two trails that we're using were part of the original stagecoach route from Mount Thomas to St David's. Yeah, and Chris, count me in. Fantastic. Jack went for a ride on my brother's old horse and he's packed with ice. He's ready to go. I heard Alec was back in town. He hasn't fronted at the pub yet. Now, if Alec is as good looking as you say he is, I'm quite looking forward to meeting him. I think he is gorgeous. Yeah? Yeah, but he's taken. Did you know he played for Australia in the 94 Commonwealth Games? 94, is it? It's actually quite a big age gap between you two. Oh, yeah, 12 years, but my mum reckons we're the two kids that are most to like because we share the McKinley determination, Dean. <laughs> Excuse me, can everyone please get out of the way? Thank you. What's going on here? It's my car. Look at it. I just look at it. Huh? It's wrecked. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You are. Oh, Maggie, yeah, this is my brother. Oh, oh Alec, I'm um, Maggie Doyle. Um, listen, we'll find out what's going on here. Can everybody just move back, please? Can you just stand back, please, all of you? Right, yeah, well, well, that's it. Good boys, the girls now. I'm sure someone thought what happened here. No? You're a real bastard, aren't you? Don't think I'm going to give up this evening! It's a nice way to meet your brother. Boy, you too. Look, it was nothing to do with anyone else. It's private business between him and me. Kathy, you assaulted him. If Mr McKinley decides to make a complaint, then it does become a police matter. At the very least, it's going to be reported to your school principal. He won't want you guys involved. Oh, well, why is that? Doesn't matter. Ah, oh, yeah, it does matter. Take a seat. Kathy, what do you know about the vandalism to Mr McKinley's car? I know I didn't do it. Why would I? I had something to say and I said it to his face. I don't need to bash Alex's car. Well, you're quite familiar with him. I'm what you always call him by his first name? Everybody does. Mr McKinley makes him feel old, he says. How old are you, Cathy? Be 18 in October. 18. Do... Well, you want to spit it out, Jack? Yeah. Um... OK. <laughs> so, so you'd have a fair bit of contact with him at school, yeah? Hockey practices and matches on Saturday. And what's the feeling amongst the team about Alec as a coach? He makes his train pretty hard, but he gets results. Well, do you and think that... So, sorry, Jack, do you think that that could be behind the vandalism, the fact that somebody's resentful that they're being worked too hard? It could be. I know it gets me worked up sometimes. Is that why you slapped him? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I did it. Because of the work. He's a total slave driver. The guy's supposed to be some kind of sports legend, right? So if he's such a winner, how come he ends up coaching a bunch of girls in a dead-end place like this? You didn't answer the question, Chef. Why do you think that someone would vandalise Mr McKinley's car? Maybe they just don't like him, I guess. Do you 